Hi, I'm Phil Albertelli, and welcome to this 2016 edition of the annual Week in Doubt Christmas special. In the past, I've only mentioned Krampus in passing, but seeing how it's the holiday season once again, and Krampus mania has seemingly reached critical mass, I figured that the time was finally right to dedicate an entire episode to this once obscure figure. In recent years, this creepy Yuletide character has been steadily clawing his way into popular culture. In 2012, he was the subject of a novel by artist and writer Gerald Brom, entitled Krampus the Yule Lord. Back in 2004, a comical depiction of the character appeared in an episode of the animated series The Venture Brothers. And this year, he was depicted in two horror movies, one simply entitled Krampus and the other being a Christmas horror story. So although it looks like he's well on his way to becoming a household name, many of you are probably still asking the question, just who or what is Krampus? The first thing one notices about Krampus is a shocking bestial appearance that makes him look like some holdover from the pagan past, more akin to a satyr or devil than a heartwarming holiday character. One theory is that Krampus may have originally been one of the sons of Hel, the goddess of the underworld in Norse mythology. His demonic visage is complete with a shaggy coat of fur, horns, cloven hoof, sometimes one, sometimes two, and a lolling red tongue. In Alpine tradition, Krampus is a companion of St. Nicholas. In good cop, bad cop fashion, the two share a kind of division of labor. While Santa rewards good children, Krampus, armed with a scourge or switch of birch branches, or sometimes a whip, punishes naughty children. On his back, he carries a sack or basket for carting away his child victims, possibly for drowning, transport to hell, or even for eating. Krampus is also often depicted as carrying chains, which, as some suggest, may symbolize the binding of the devil by Christianity. The character's exact origins are still a matter of speculation. Anthropologist John J. Honigman wrote the following in 1975. The St. Nicholas Festival we are describing incorporates cultural elements widely distributed in Europe, in some cases going back to pre-Christian times. Nicholas himself became popular in Germany around the 11th century. The feast dedicated to this patron of children is only one winter occasion in which children are the objects of special attention, others being Martinmas, the Feast of the Holy Innocents, and New Year's Day. Masked devils acting boisterously and make nuisances of themselves are known in Germany since at least the 16th century, while animal masked devils combining dreadful comic Scharig Lustig antics appeared in medieval church plays. A large literature, much of it by European folklorists, bears on these subjects. Austrians in the community we studied are quite aware of quote-unquote heathen elements being blended with Christian elements in the St. Nicholas customs and in other traditional winter ceremonies. They believe Krampus derives from a pagan supernatural who was assimilated to the Christian devil. The assimilation or Christianization of existing pagan customs was a common practice stretching back into early Christian antiquity. In the case of Krampus, it appears he had been paired with St. Nicholas and made a part of Christian winter celebrations somewhere around the 17th century, if not earlier. In parts of the European world, the Feast of St. Nicholas is observed on December 6th, the night before as Krampus knocked, or Krampus night. Either accompanying Nicholas or on his own, the figure visits homes and businesses. Nicholas rewards good children with gifts, while Krampus dispenses coal and bundled sticks. In the Austrian region of Sturia, the bundled sticks, or rooten bundles, are presented to families where they are displayed year-round to remind children to behave, lest they should face the punishment of Krampus. Another Krampus tradition is the Krampus Lauf, a Krampus run, or run of the Krampuses. Young men fueled by alcohol, often a brandy concoction, take to the streets dressed as the bestial figure. While Krampus parades and festivals have long been a part of Austrian and Bavarian winter celebrations, recently they have been gaining increasing popularity in parts of the Czech Republic. In some cases, participants also dress as being sometimes female in appearance, known as Perkton, 
Frightful Minions of Perkta, another pagan holdover based on an ancient Upper Germanic Alpine goddess known as Pert. Pert started out as a benevolent pagan goddess, but over time became depicted as a nightmarish witch-like being who slices open the abdomens of her victims, replacing their organs with sticks, pebbles, and other debris before sewing them back up. Now, you might think that alcohol-fueled young men in demonic costumes might be a recipe for disaster, but I was only able to find one article about any kind of violence breaking out at a Krampus run. According to the Huffington Post, festivities in Austria recently got out of hand when one overzealous costume participant injured five teens with his scourge of bundled sticks. The publication also reports that Austrian authorities had to warn Syrian and Iraqi refugees ahead of time so they wouldn't be frightened when revelers dressed as the devilish Krampus, as dictated by tradition, came knocking on their doors. Another long-standing tradition is the exchanging of Krampus carton, a practice which goes back to the 1800s. The cards usually depict Krampus in his traditional role as the punisher of naughty children, but some are more adult-themed and depict the bestial figure pursuing women. So from the pagan past to modern-day greeting cards, from European folklore and tradition to recent American cinema, it seems Krampus mania is here to stay. I hope you enjoyed this special holiday episode of The Week in Doubt. Thanks for listening, and Gross vom Krampus. Krampus.